question comes from Ann, and she will be directing it to Mr. Warnock. How high a priority would you place on reducing Baltimore's property tax rate, which is double that of other jurisdictions in the region? <coughs> uh, can significant cuts be achieved? And if so, how? Well, you know, a number of my uh, competitors in this race have been promising tax cuts, but, you know, I, I wish I could do that. You know, we haven't had an audit of our municipal functions in Baltimore City since William Donald Schaefer was mayor. And until we get a handle on where we're spending our money, I mentioned that Gregory Thornton found $3.6 million worth of annual expenses and ghost employees and spouses that weren't spouses just at North Avenue. And we haven't done an audit at our, municip our municipal functions since William Donald Schaefer was mayor. We're going to do that audit in the first year of my administration. My feeling is we will find savings. I would love to promise tax cuts. I think it's important. We also need to look at our water bills. You know, I was in my 276 neighborhood tour of my pickup truck around Baltimore that I've been doing with my son. We found all sorts of interesting things, one of which was a development in West Baltimore of about 30 houses that hadn't gotten a water bill in two years. And yet we take water houses away from low-income people for $250 water bills. So we need to get a handle not just on our expenses in Baltimore before we can promise a tax cut. We need to get a handle on those water bills as well. Why is it that we sell water to Baltimore County and they pay lower water bills than Baltimore City? It makes no common sense. So yes, I'm going to work hard on tax cuts for everybody, but I'm going to work equally hard on understanding where we're spending our money. Mr. Warnock, thank you very much. Ms. Dixon. Thank you. Baltimore County supplements the um, water bills, but reducing property tax, we can reduce property tax. Can we do it half? Can we do 50 cents? No. But we have to do it responsibly, a little bit at a time. And in doing that, and I've already reduced property tax three or four times, but one of the reasons why I supported the Horseshoe Casino wasn't because I'm a gambler, because I'm not, but I knew it was a new revenue, and that we use that new revenue source for not only towards education but to reduce the property tax but that's not happening in this last five years city council approved the mayor's budget based on this fund that should have gone to reduce the property tax so in my plan we're talking about reducing it responsibly by one yes we have to do performance audits in all of our agencies we have to do audits in all of our agencies we have to look at where the mm -hmm. waste is and accountability but we also have to look at how do we build and stir in our economy and how do we create opportunities and that's why i believe through the land bank which we talk about vacant properties. When, we, if, when I create the land bank, we will use that to leverage individuals who want to invest and buy properties by removing those liens on the, on the water bills and on their property tax and giving that and letting that person who wants to develop a home or a small developer who wants to develop a block to use it to leverage to go to bank. That's going to help us to attract and bring people back here in the city as well as to expand our base to create home ownership. Thank you very much, Ms. Dixon. Ms. Embry. Thank you. So as a city, we are far too reliant on property tax revenue. And we have to be disciplined and committed as a city government to making a difference in those numbers. And so in, in line with that commitment, I will stay committed to the current mayor's property tax reduction. And beyond that, I will pay further decreases and increases in other sources of revenue, like income tax revenue, as our city becomes more prosperous and as tax revenue comes online from tax breaks that will evaporate over time. But I also want to talk about the fact that we need accountability in city government because it's not just about audits, although that is incredibly important. It's also about a culture of accountability, a culture of customer service. And what I've talked about in my accountability plan is not just releasing the results of, off, of audits, but also releasing the results of what my administration is doing to correct them on a rolling basis so that the public will know month to month the progress that we are making and have access to the data that they need to assess my administration's performance. I will grade my performance, but I also will make the data available so that every citizen in Baltimore can grade the performance of my administration. It's about ethics reform. It's about making searchable and available all of the city's contracts and procurement um, <coughs> deals. It's having this data not just available to the public, but available in a form that's usable, that apps can be created, and the, ci the citizens of the city can be involved and engaged in the process of government. It comes down to leadership and accountability and who can actually manage and understand complex systems. And I am the you. only person on the stage who does not need management training or ethics counseling but can start fixing the problems on day one. Thank you very much, Ms. Embry. 
Mr. Mosby. I would adamantly object to what uh, Ms. Ember just said. Um, I've had the ability of managing multi-million dollar budgets and building large technical data centers from Pomona, California to Western Virginia. So management is not an issue. And I also digress slightly, Ann, on your question, because it's not <coughs> about dressing up Dan downtown with Light City. It's about really impacting Blight City throughout the city of Baltimore. That's how we increase our image. Regarding the question around taxes, I'm the only person on the stage. I released a, a very detailed and responsible tax plan three months ago that talked about the fact that right now our rate is artificially set high in comparison to many of our surrounding counties like Anne Arundel and Howard County. And the way that we develop a playing field where we can compare apples to apples is by removing uh, the tax, um, uh, the, the, the fee associated with waste removal. What I also have done in my responsible plan is done a pure cut not just for with private um, ownership, uh, owner-occupied properties, but properties all throughout the city of Baltimore. Baltimore, when we look at it from an economics perspective, we have the supply, but we do not have the demand. And to increase the demand, we have to put the incentives in there. And then lastly, unfortunately, we have allowed Ms. Williams, who was the woman who lived right next to me when I moved into my house, to live in between two vacants for 20 years. The, the, my house was vacant, it was pouring in, my water was going in her house, it was impacting her efficiency bill, but more importantly, it directly impacted her appreciation on her property. But the owner of my property paid the same exact tax rate as Ms. Williams. What we need to do is a tiered tax structure to really go after our, um, our owners you. who do not take care of their properties. Mr. Busby, thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Pugh. First, I would also continue where we already are with this current administration. We do have a double-A bond rating. And if we stayed on the trajectory that we currently are, we've reduced the property tax by 14 cents. If we were to continue over the next four years, it would be under 28 cents, which would give us under $2. I also would create a tax property tax relief commission so that we can look at responsible ways to reduce the property tax and also we have TIF projects that are coming back online I think I would use that money to go towards directly towards reducing property taxes for people in our city and when we think about the 30,000 board of houses that live in that are currently in our community this is an opportunity for us to get people back into our city helping us to develop our neighborhoods but you could also start those property owners off with a lower tax rate and I do like the tier system because in DC for example those who have houses that they're not taking care of in their city they are taxed at a higher rate and I think that's a good program <coughs> as well. Okay, Ms. Pugh, thank you. Mr. Stokes. Uh, uh, thank you, Vic. Of course we must break down the property tax rate as well as this onerous water bill. Where else do you put a, uh, uh, you, you drive your water bill up 12, 13 percent yearly. Nobody gets such a pay raise. It is economically stupid of Baltimore to have such a tax rate that leverages us in a way that disincentivizes people from being able to build and invest in this city. Of course we must give tips. Of course we must give pilots. Of course we must give tax breaks to the very rich because they can go next door or next door or next door and build what they could build in Baltimore, but for very little of the same dollars. Of course we should. It's what other cities have done over and over and over again. And where do we get it? First of all, it's one cent gives us $3 million on the property tax rate. We have a $3.2 billion budget. I can find $45 million out of that in the first year to cut 15 cents off the budget right away. Then we work with the state on smart growth money because to put uh, growth here in Baltimore where the infrastructure is already solid. It's what they did in Massachusetts for Boston. It's what they did in California for San Francisco. It is what works because the investors will buy cheaply in Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you very much.